What's up guys, Johnny here, welcome back. Long time you'll see, but I'm glad to have you here today with me. Uh, today we're checking out something a little bit different. We're trying out timing systems. Why do you guys care about timing systems? Well, a lot of people are getting excited about DJI HD racing and what the obstacles are to overcome or to get it involved in multi-GP style races. Now, there's a few things that keep DJI from being really incorporated into multi-GP racing in my perspective, but uh, we'll cover those in another video and we'll talk about that and what needs to change to have D uh, DJI more as a central piece of multi-GP racing. Uh, but one of the key things that's always brought up is inconsistencies in timing. Now, one solution that you see posted about a lot is rotor hazard. Rotor hazard is based on the Delta 5 timing system, which you know I built a few years ago. You can go back and actually watch that video where I talked about my Delta 5. Uh, but you can update the Delta 5 hardware to run the rotor hazard software, and supposedly that makes it so you don't miss any laps and you have be much better timing with DJI. So over here at the starting gate, you see that I've set up both a lap RF and a rotor hazard timing system. The rotor hazard timing system is living inside of uh, what I call a partial Faraday cage or whatever, uh, but I put in copper tape all around it to keep the RF from ex from coming into the box except for the direction from the start gate. So that's what they recommend to get the best results for timing, so that's what we're doing here. Now I'm running both of these side by side, both powered off power over ethernet back to my uh, desk over there, and what I plan to do is compare the times that I'm getting as I'm flying my quads. Now I did this test before out on my own with uh, a friend out here flying, and when he was flying especially, I saw some pretty big disparities in timing. I didn't see that much disparity in my times. I saw maybe a 0 0.2, 0 0.3 second differences, but I did see over one second for some of his time. So today we're gonna to try to do it a little bit more scientific, record that data, compare it over time, and see how likely it is. If we're seeing 0 0.2, 0 0.3 seconds differences per lap, that can be kind of troubling. Uh, the good thing I saw is that over a fastest three consecutive, it kind of averaged out where it wasn't that big of a deal. Uh, but as we're doing global leaderboard um, sort of battling and battling people from different chapters, we have to know we can trust our timing systems. Now you might be saying, what makes the LAP RF so good? Why are you just comparing the LAP RF to the rotor hazard? Well, there's a couple things going on. One, the LAP RF has become the standard for timing in multi-GP. It's what they use at all multi-GP events. It's what we, most of the chapters use to run their events. It's trusted. But you'd be right like how do we know that one lap ref is times just as well as another one or that those lap times be consistent that you know just because i put two timing systems out here that they should be the same what if there's two lap refs let's say there is a discrepancy how do you know who's doing it better who's right who's wrong well the truth is we don't know so what i'm going to do too is i'm going to place a high frame rate camera out by the starting line and use that as my third timing system so as the quad goes through i'll time it check the frame it comes back again use that as my reference time and then see how these different timing systems do so let's get out here and flying and uh, see how we do all right guys, so just to get warmed up and run my analog quad first, the goal was to run analog and then run digital. Running analog quad, I got both timing systems in practice mode right now, and I gotta tell you, so far the results have been really good. I'm actually a little bit surprised. Now, last time I was out here doing the timing, there was constantly difference 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 seconds, occasional one second differences. I was also flying with another guy, and maybe that combining signals was causing an issue. Maybe the track was bringing them close that was causing issues, not really sure, but so far it's been spot on. The, the biggest difference is 0 0.1 second. Pretty much everything is underneath 0 0.1 seconds before in practice, but I'm gonna switch it over, try to get it to where I can capture what those uh, lap times are. And uh, yeah, see if we can do a little bit more detailed look at all the different lap times. So we're gonna do the test now with analog and then we're gonna switch it over to digital. All right, so for this test here, we're using the GoPro Hero 9. I put it in uh, 1080p, 120 frames per second super view. Super view just so I can get the widest field of view to see the quad coming for as long as possible. Hopefully it helps me time it a little bit better. Uh, we're gonna get this set up right here by the start gate, put it down, start it off and uh, start flying and then compare our times. It's so much 
guy. So results really good through there. I did five packs of analog. Total of 17 laps out here. I haven't had a chance to look at the GoPro footage yet. We're gonna take that home to really look at the data. But what I can tell you so far is of the laps I recorded, the biggest difference in lap times was 0.081 seconds. To me, that's pretty much within the noise. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, so I'm being really encouraged by this, but let's try out the analog or the DJI quad and see how she does out here. All right guys, so as always, things get a lot more interesting with digital. So what we noticed there with digital was we didn't miss any laps of the rotor hazard, which is the big claim that we get from rotor hazard people. We did miss laps of the lap RF. Um, I think I did 32 total laps on digital. I wanted to do a couple extra batteries because I was seeing some interesting results. I missed six of them on the lap RF in live time. Now I'm using the settings that I've always used for the lap RF in live time. Uh, for digital, I think I could improve it a little bit, but that's basically what I was doing. So. Went through, out of 32, I missed six. Now the time differences were pretty interesting. Usually they'd be pretty close about the same. Every so often I'd see 0 0.4, 0 0.5 seconds off. Um, and my concern is it's all related to the variable power levels of DJI, but I guess we're gonna see. So this one I'm really interested to get home, pop out that SD card on the GoPro, go through that footage and, and see if I can figure out exactly how long um, those laps were and see which one was closer. I did notice if I go into marshalling inside of rotor hazard, which is a really, really cool feature. I can adjust a little bit. I see the times adjust by you know, up to 0.1 seconds sometimes. So, you know, it's tough to know exactly how fast these laps are. I do think within 0.1 seconds with this kind of lap time and lapping uh, is good enough for multi GP. We just, we can't be perfect. So I think that's close enough. Um, but yeah, this was really interesting. I can't wait to get home, compile all the data for you. And uh, yeah, let's head home and uh, take a look at what we got. All right, guys, so we are back home taking a look at the results we got. And I got to tell you, this is really, really interesting, at least just to me. So hopefully you guys get, uh, enjoy this too or get something out of it. So the first thing I want to do when I when I look at these results is I want to take you through the context of what we're looking at as far as uh, timing differences go. So what I've done here is I've actually taken a freeze of each of the frames leading up to passing through a gate as recorded with the GoPro Hero 9 at 120 frames per second. So what you're looking at here is actually one frame. So each frame is one 120th of a second, which is about 0 0.008 seconds of time. So if you look between the quad as it's going through that start gate and just back it up slightly, 
Um, if I were to guess, that's probably about a foot, maybe a little bit less than a foot that you're seeing there. Um, so a little bit less than a foot, 0 0.008 seconds. If you take this back one, two, three, four, five, six, seven frames, you know, we're starting to get to a pretty big margin of time, but we're still talking about something that's happening over a very short period of time. If you watched uh, from my flight footage when you saw the actual passing through the gate, it happens in a split second, right? It's a really, really small amount of time. Um, but use this as the context of if I say that, you know, something's off from the GoPro timing by 0 0.01 seconds, 0 0.02 seconds. You know, we're talking about one of these frames, two of these frames, you know, at most maybe three of these frames. And if you put that amount of distance between the, the beginning and ending of the gate, right? So if you put the, the middle of that time frame in the middle of the gate, it's all basically in the gate. Um, you know, it's an extremely rare day where we'd have quads that are that close to each other, finishing a lap and trying to figure out, you know, who actually was faster. All right, so going through the analog results first, because I think those are kind of the most straightforward. So what we're looking at here is the difference between the GoPro and the rotor hazard or the GoPro and the lap RF timing. So on the left column, what you're seeing in this graph is time in seconds. So if you see 0 0.025, that's 0 0.025 seconds. And when you look at it, you see that most of the times for both the rotor hazard and the lap RF are coming in at less than 0 0.025 seconds. 0 0.025 seconds is three frames of that video. So going back real quick to that other shot, again, if you just picture um, one of those quads in the gate, one quad just to the left of the gate, one quad just to the right of the gate, that's the amount of time we're talking about on kind of like the far end of of timing, which to me just blows me away how good these timing systems are. Like that's some insane precision for something that just picking up a video signal as it whizzes by, you know, going 90 miles an hour. That's absolutely insane. But as you can see here, the results are actually looking really, really good for both the rotor hazard and the lap RF, which to me is really encouraging. Um, the lap RF uses a, a very different, um, antenna system where it actually has a directional antenna pointed at the gate versus the rotor hazard, there actually is no antenna. So it's picking up RF from all different directions. And that's why we put it in that, you know, that taped up box. So you could kind of direct where the RF is coming from, but even just doing it that way, you can see it still can be really, really precise. And the thing to look at here too, is whenever you see kind of like the big differences, especially on the lap RF side, if you see a big difference in time, so for example, the second lap, you can see it was just over 0 0.025 seconds ahead of the GoPro. And then the next one is immediately, you know, almost half a, or 0 0.05 seconds after. So what's happening is it might be picking up just before the gate, just after the gate. But over time, if we're doing fastest three consecutive laps or something like that, it's going to average out to be pretty damn accurate right on top of that gate, right? Because there might be slight differences before and after, but if it was picking it up, you know, slightly before the gate every time, eventually it'd be adding up so much, it'd be a big difference. But because it's averaging out, um, and you can see it's even averaging out for the rotor hazard. We're getting something very, very accurate the more laps we do. And even so, even at one lap, it's already pretty damn accurate if you ask me. So taking a look at the absolute difference. So taking out the, you know, is it less than the GoPro, more than the GoPro? Which one is seeing bigger results overall? And you can see that when it comes to analog, the lap RF does look to be slightly more accurate in my testing than the rotor hazard. But to me, these numbers that we're looking at are extremely small. You know, in the biggest case, it's almost 0 0.05 seconds. So let's put that in perspective. Uh, you know, what does that come out to? That's that's six frames, right? So if you take if you take that um, going through the gate and what I showed you as far as the distances go, but three to the left, three to the right, that's the total amount of discrepancy we're seeing in the gate. It's very, very small. We're talking, you know, it might be three feet behind the gate, three feet in front of the gate. I mean, that's just such a small margin. Um, to me, that's super, super accurate. Plus, you figure out the fact that it's actually averaging out with the other ones, and they just, to me, it's a non-issue. Now, the one caveat I'm going to give to this is that I was testing one specific receiver in my rotor hazard. I was testing before with other people. They're flying on other channels, and we didn't have the best results. I can't speak to why that was. I can't speak to if that was an issue with the other receiver. I can't speak to if that was an issue with that guy's quad, if the lines he was flying or whatever. I have no idea because I wasn't recording the data to analyze it properly. So I can't draw any conclusion from that. I'm just saying from what I was testing here with one particular channel, one particular receiver in rotor hazard, it was extremely, extremely accurate while testing analog. And, you know, to me, that speaks really well for something that you can build DIY yourself from very inexpensive parts. You know, for me, I built mine for, I think it was less than $200 
for eight channels. But if you only need one channel, you can make it even cheaper. So to me, that that's really encouraging, works well. But you know what people really care about that we're here to talk about is DJI and how it does for timing DJI, right? We want to do HD flying. We want to race HD quads, but timing's a big issue with Lap or F. Everyone use Lap or F, blah, blah, blah. Rotor hazard's the answer. Well, is it? All right, so looking at this first chart, it looks like we had a bit of a disaster situation. You see this massive blue line, two seconds off rotor hazard. Um, personally, I'm just going to go ahead and discard that as an outlier. So what happened here when I was flying is when I took off, even though it was very far away from the gate, it picked that up as a lap, I think, as a, as a trigger of the gate, and then skipped the next time I went through the gate and added to the next lap. So I think that in normal race when I was flying, it, I wouldn't have been flying from that particular spot. It wouldn't have picked that up as a lap, and you wouldn't have noticed this issue. So personally, I'm just going to go ahead and discard that as an outlier and ignore that. So once we've discarded that, you see something really, really interesting. Now, you notice all those big red bars that you see that are far away from that zero time. That's the lap RF, right? So it was very, very hard to get accurate, consistent results with the lap RF when timing DJI. Keep in mind, I also missed about six or seven laps um, and you see more items missing here because what would happen is I'd miss a lap and then get it the next time. So it would show a time of double what it should. And I couldn't compare that sort of time to the GoPro because I don't know what the actual times were. So I had to throw out double the number of results I would have otherwise. So it's basically missing 12 laps here from the lap RF. Now, just the results that I got from the laps that were there were extremely inconsistent. To me, as we start seeing, you know, a quarter of a second here, a quarter of a second there, a quarter of a second again, a quarter of a second again, that really starts to add up to me. But what really strikes me and it really impresses me is if you look at those blue bars, that's the rotor hazard. Rotor hazard did not miss a single lap all day. Not only did it not miss a lap with DJI, but it was extremely accurate all day compared to my GoPro on that DJI quad. So, I mean, to me, looking at it, the DJI timing with rotor hazard was almost as accurate as the lap RF and the rotor hazard were timing analog, which I got to be honest with you, I didn't expect that result. I thought no matter what we did, DJI was going to be less accurate because it has that variable power output and whatever, blah, 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 other issues. But somehow rotor hazard still just its algorithm seemed to work pretty well with DJI quads, picked it up every time very accurately based on this and assuming you know, people have their rotor hazards configured properly, set up properly, and that my other issues aren't issues with other receivers and things like that. It seems to be the accurate way to time DJI or to time DJI quads right now. Based on this, I would not trust results for DJI quads coming from lap RF timing systems. Now, the settings I use, I talked about it earlier. I use a uh, threshold of 600, a sensitivity of 63, which are, you know, a far lower threshold than we use for analog and a higher sensitivity than we use for analog. And has pretty much generally been accepted for most of the race organizers I've talked to as being what to run for DJI. It still did not have good results for me. It didn't have good accuracy and it missed laps. Now, if I was actually hosting a race, I wouldn't notice a half second difference, but like you can't tell if the timing was off by half a second. It said it at the time, basically when it's supposed to say the time, how do you know if it's actually accurate? And based on what I'm saying, even if you have someone flying DJI with the lap RF and it says out their time, I don't have a lot of confidence that that time is truly accurate. It could be off by quite a bit. And that to me is just, you know, pretty discouraging and it was pretty eye opening. But again, really the point of this was to look at how lap or, or the, the rotor hazard did. And that just blew me away. I did not expect the results to be this good. And again, just, just to kind of exacerbate the issue, you, you look at these differences here and just the the total difference in time is just so much larger with the lap RF over the rotor hazard. Um, I, I just got to hand it off to the rotor hazard. Again, I keep saying it, but I'm just super, super impressed with how well rotor hazard can actually handle timing of DJI quads. Going into this, I expected the results to be significantly less accurate um, than what they were. So I, kudos, hats off to rotor hazard. I... I don't even know how you did it. All right, so we look at the deviations and we can see here as we're looking at what is it like 0 0.001 second on the 25th percentile. Um, on average, it's off by 0 0.02, right? In the worst case, it's 0 0.05 seconds. I mean, very, very small moments in time 
uh, that to me is all within the noise, and that's super impressive. Again, if we look over at the lap or F side, usually it's not too bad. It's pretty accurate, but we saw quite a few getting out there to that half second mark. And just again, based on the results, I don't really trust those times for a multi GP global leaderboard type situation flying DJI. Um, those kinds of differences per lap can add up. Those can be differences in going to sports class or pro class. Um, you know, I don't think we have to worry about so much about this being the top qualifier on the leaderboard yet, but that to me was really concerning. Um, you know, and maybe should be considered going forward and how we properly handle these DJI quads. Cause that just was pretty troubling to me. All right. And bringing it back to analog, you know, we look at the same sort of 25%, 75% deviations. You can see that the results are really, really good um, for rotor hazard and lap or F. They're just a little bit better for lap or F. But again, to me, these sorts of numbers are all in the noise to me. Both are working really well, both timed really well. Um, both are good options, it seems, for timing of analog quads. Hopefully, this was helpful for you. Hopefully, you guys learned something. Hopefully, you enjoy learning about these timing systems. To me, I'm really encouraged for how well we were able to time these DJI quads. There is an option out there that works. I've seen all the, the DJI fanboy mafia, as I call them, claiming how great Rotor has it is and how it solves all the world's problems with timing. And, you know, maybe there's something to that. Maybe they are right. Um, I still think it needs more testing to have full on confidence for me that things won't get a little squirrely. I'd love to see it with, um, more quads out there flying and stuff. Uh, for example, I will say that while I was flying DJI, I never missed a lap, but I did also trigger a lap on a different channel, which is, you know, a whole different issue with DJI and how it broadcasts on other channels and interference and all that kind of stuff. But um, so with more quads in the air, we'll see how things get. But this is the only test I can do so far. Um, but I definitely look forward to testing out this rotor hazard more. And, and maybe it is the solution for DJI flying and DJI racing. So anyway, I'm going to leave it right there for you guys. Hopefully you find that interesting. Hope you find it helpful. Let me know down below if you're racing DJI, excited about DJI, excited about rotor hazard um, and what you thought of this. And uh, as always, I'll catch y'all next time. Peace. Soon as I saw you, I knew it's never